Returning to my coin lady channel, I am pleased to see you again. Huge, monumentally important updates have recently come our way from China, the biggest of which date back to 2008. As I mentioned before, this is one of the most significant updates that we have seen from China since 2008. For the first time since the global financial crisis of 2008, China is contemplating pouring 1 trillion yuan, or $142 billion, into its biggest state banks. Everyone is starting to get really bullish on this now, because they think it will bring liquidity to the market. The opening of the floodgates for crypto trading has been the subject of several liquidity announcements recently. We can now accept cryptocurrency payments through PayPal, thanks to their latest announcement. The topic of increasing liquidity has been the subject of several positive announcements. However, the issue here is that these injections do not exhibit bullish behavior. This, for instance, stretches all the way back to 2020 if you give it some serious thought. Consider the year 2020 again. Stimulus checks totaled $814 billion. Obviously, that kind of money doesn't come easily or for free. For instance, think about what happened for the following four years after we were required to repay the stimulus funds. How can we repay it, anyway? The cost of living, including food, gas, and utilities, soared, so we had to pay it back through inflation. To further illustrate the point, consider the actions taken by China, for instance, in relation to some of these injections. This is really worrisome. Will the markets be pumped now? Will this enable the entry of liquidity? Yes, I think so. The most important thing, though, is to pay attention to what comes next. Keep in mind that this is happening all around their biggest state banks, due to the fact that liquidity is tightening around these institutions. It has remained historically low. The money supply is shrinking. As an example of a new source of fiscal stimulus, China plans to issue $280.4 billion in sovereign debt. This was the original announcement of $140.2 billion to China's biggest state banks, and sure, if we look closely at this exclusive, China would issue 280 billion yuan of sovereign debt this year to aid in economic revival. Some fiscal support measures may be presented this week, but it has now come to light that the exact amount is $284 billion. The stimulus package was split down the middle, with 50% meant to encourage spending and 50% to assist municipalities in paying down their debt. All right, then, we're going to start pouring money into paying off debt. Does that clarify anything for you? I have to ask, does that seem like a way forward that can be sustained? Some of these debt issues require immediate attention. All families with two or more children, excluding the first, should receive a monthly stipend of approximately 800 yuan. Let's simply pour more money into it. In other words, it's 2020 all over again, with the exception that this is stimulus 2.0 in China. What we are about to see is monumental, and it's a little bit crazy. A debt catastrophe is imminent as a result of this. China is getting ready to pour $142 billion into the country's largest banks, according to an article by the Gold Telegraph. One more time, we are aware that this is only half. We have not intervened since the financial crisis of 2008. Half of the funds will go to families and other such organizations. I can confirm that this is huge news. The international debt crisis is the reason why gold is at record highs in most fiat currencies around the world. Right now, I'm betting that nearly every asset class is going to inflate significantly. Both gold and cryptocurrency will persist. However, I have also been sounding the alarm about the consequences, as we can see the warning signs clearly. An impending debt crisis is on the horizon. What will actually transpire is the primary question at hand. Because although we do experience a debt crisis, we also trigger a liquidity crisis. I say this because our national debt is reaching unprecedented proportions, 
and it's growing daily. Also, in case you all remember from January of 2023, this was issued by the World Economic Forum. It was around the year 2023. There is $65.0 trillion in secret debt that the world's financial system must deal with. The graphic clearly shows that the global financial system is saddled with $65 trillion in unrecorded debt held by shadow banks and non-US banks. This debt takes the shape of foreign exchange swaps, which have grown in popularity over the past decade as a result of monetary easing and extremely low interest rates. In an effort to hedge against currency risk, companies, central banks, and financial institutions have been purchasing these swaps. Significant hazards, like liquidity shortages, are associated with the enormous increase in dollar debt. With that, I leave it to you. Here we are, straight from the World Economic Forum, discussing liquidity crises, rising volatility, and general market instability. Professionals advise against I want to know, why does this matter? Now that rates are starting to fall, more money will be lent out, which will lead to higher debt levels and tighter liquidity, in other words, they are currently adding fuel to the fire. Worst yet, we still don't have a clue as to who or what to believe, in December 2022, just one month prior to the publication of this article, the BIS, the Central Bank of the United States, claimed that foreign exchange swap positions pointed to more than $80 trillion in hidden US dollar debt that had not been reported on the balance sheet. Is it $80 trillion then? Is it $65 trillion, though? Pay close attention to this. We have no idea how much money is owed, particularly in the case of concealed debt, and the current level of debt is just absurdly unsustainable. We have the total amount of debt, but what really matters is the concealed debt, because that's where the action ends. In addition to the show ending, the foundation cracks start to open up, and then everything goes wrong. This is because the next collapse will be unlike any seen since 2008. Everyone is still acting as if nothing has happened despite my repeated warnings, especially in light of the Fed's recent rate cuts. Okay, I'll take care of it. I'm fine with everything. The markets are booming, so, yeah, everything is okay. However, keep in mind this, I'll repeat this, because it is important. Prior to everyone having a terrible day, everything is going swimmingly. The viewer's presence here is greatly appreciated. Bye for now, and please subscribe and like my channel.